This video will demonstrate how to conduct safety analysis on an AADL model using CESAF. First, we create a property set that contains the hazards and losses for our system written in AADL. I'm going to create a new property set and I will populate that set with hazards and losses using the CESAF properties default property set. CESAF properties provides the structure that you fill in for each loss and hazard. Here I'm defining a new loss called experiment failure. You define each loss as a constant and then provide properties for that constant using the CESAF properties types. Each loss has an ID and a description. After defining losses, we define hazards. A hazard is a situation that could lead to a loss. To define a hazard, we again create a new constant, and this time, in addition to providing an ID and a description, we provide a reference to the loss that could result from that hazard. After defining my hazards and losses, I import those hazards and losses into my AADL model using the with operator. I also need to include the CESAF properties property set. Now that I have included the CESAF properties property set, and the hazards and losses property set, I can run the CESAF hazards and loss wizard. To run this wizard, I select the system implementation I want to modify. Then I select the hazards and losses from my property set that are relevant to that system. When I click finish, CESAF will add properties referencing those hazards and losses to my system implementation. Next, I will use the CESAF command and feedback path wizard to indicate which data flows in my system are feedback flows and which are command flows. Again, I select the relevant system implementation. Then for each end-to-end -end flow in that system implementation, I indicate whether the flow is a feedback flow or a command flow. Here I've indicated that the visual presence of the robot is feedback and that the two button pushing flows are command flows. After indicating which flows are command flows and which are feedback flows, we add control actions, which are actions the operator can take along the flow that is defined as a command flow. Here on the red button flow, we have a command called stop robot, where the operator can stop the robot. I can also define a start robot control action on the blue button command flow. Again, when I click finish, my model is updated with these properties.
The next step is to indicate unsafe control actions, which are contexts in which the use or lack of use of a control action can lead to a hazard. We can go through the step-by-step -step wizard, or we can use this tree view to navigate to a particular control action. Here we're describing what happens if Gerald executes the stop robot control action too late, and a context in which that could lead to a hazard. We can also express details of a scenario that would cause that context. For example, if Gerald is distracted, he may fail to push the stop robot button in time, leading to the robot falling off of the table. We can add further detail by expressing causal factors that contribute to that scenario. Each scenario can have multiple causal factors. In this case, we will note context information, such as Gerald has multiple tasks to do and is distracted because he's performing multiple tasks. For each causal factor in a given scenario, we can then add constraints that become system safety requirements. After adding lots of causal factors and scenarios and unsafe control actions, the size of the model can grow large. To improve readability and to help discover and understand the scope of your model, you can use the XMind view, which is a mind map view of all of the safety properties you have applied to your model. You can also drill down into individual nodes in this mind map to get a clearer view of a particular piece of your model. When you want to generate an analysis report, you use the outline view to instantiate your system model and then use the report generation capability of CESAF to generate HTML template-based reports.